What do you guys need to know? The lottery number? <laughs> right, what do we got? How does it feel to have some of your guys back on the field? That have been it always back? feels good when the guys come back. That, that you know, you look forward to see them coming back, getting back into the swing of things, getting back into the, the to the groove of what we're trying to accomplish. That's always a good feeling for the coaches. Any I mean, any position. Yeah, but I mean, even some of your injured guys, like seeing you know, Antonio out there and mm -hmm. and, yeah, and we're Russell, and we're, we're bringing them back slowly. We're not bringing them back. You know, where they're going to practice 100 plays a day. So we're, we're bringing them back slowly to slowly fit them in. You know what I mean? And uh, they're enjoying it. Are you relying on the training staff to, to let you know how much you can push those guys? That's what they do. That You know, as a coach, whatever the trainer says to do, we do. We don't, you know, and I don't say, hey, don't listen to him, get in there. I was on staffs where... You know, a couple of coaches did that, and the next thing you know, you got a million lawyers, and you got the media, and you got everybody else saying, hey, they shouldn't have done that. No, he says he's not playing. He ain't playing. He may, I... Coach, besides just having guys out there, how does the line gel? Say that again? Besides just having the guys out for practice, how does the line gel? It comes in the chemistry in the meeting room. The chemistry you create in the meeting room, okay, between the coaches and the players is more important than any X and O I can draw on the board. That's the most important thing. The X's and O's fall into place, but the chemistry that's created in that room, okay, is what really counts. And hey, what is the key for the to be a, a really good run blocker? Oh, being physical, that good feet. I think your 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 center, your core, okay, your core and your footwork, okay. You need to be able to recover, okay, and have good feet. It's the first thing when I look at somebody, when I'm looking at the film, okay, and they say, hey, we're going to draft this guy, okay? Well, the first thing I look at is, can he recover? Okay? If he can't recover, I kind of stop right there. Because what's the sense of taking the guy? If he can't recover and block somebody, right? So now well, how's his feet moving? Okay? Can he recover and his feet are moving? He can stay on the guy. Now, if we can get those two pots together, right, then we just keep progressing from there, okay? And then... Yeah, I, I like the tough guys, the physical guys, you know, and the smart guys. That all fits into it. Do you always get all those guys? No. You know, you get guys that, that can block the guy. Like I had some guys at Tampa that can block their guys. They weren't really physical guys, but they blocked their guys. The guys don't make the play. You know, I like the physical guys that, you know, put you into the ground and you get nasty with them and they love to get dirty and that stuff like that. Those are the kind of guys that I, I, my lines kind of, you know, resemble those guys. You know what I mean? But but if you're blocking at the end of the day, guys, it's, did your guy make the play or not? I talked to okay. Joel the other day, and he said it was a goal for him to be back with the team at the start of training camp, which he was. He took some snaps with the um, first team. But what did you see from him once you got signed on? Is he kind of made that rehab through the, after the surgery? It just showed you what kind of person he was and his desire to get back. Well, he's a true professional. He's, he's got the passion and the heart for the game. You know what I mean? I, I said that in the last time I talked to you guys. He has that, and he worked himself into coming back and doing that. You know what I mean? So, you know, Joe Batoni was a guy that I would go into the foxhole with. You know what I mean? I would take him to war. I would go with him. I can trust him. Okay, I can trust him. What's your feeling on how much practice Joe Thomas needs? Say that again? What's your feeling on how much practice time Joe Thomas needs? Joe Thomas has played every play for 10 years. His amount of practice time, you can count on one hand, okay? So what I'm saying is he'll get himself ready. He'll get himself ready the way he needs to get ready, okay? And he's played next to Joel before. So the communication between, between them two is really good, okay? And he knows how to play the game. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about how many snaps he gets. He doesn't have enough. Not too, no, he, he'll, he's fine what we're doing with him. You're a line coach. Is it kind of mind-boggling to think a guy could play every snap as long as he has? That is mind-boggling, yes. That's quite the – I mean, they should give him the yellow jacket now. <laughs> how, uh, how is your battle at right tackle going? It's going good. It's a good competition. It's fun to watch them. It's, it's fun to watch them compete, you know. So, especially in the room. They're competing in the room as well as they compete on the field. That, you know, that, that's a fun thing as a coach to watch those guys compete – you know, for that spot. You know, who's going to be the guy? I, I have no idea. Is it a little challenging to, to do it the way that you kind of have to do it where one of them has that's, to play Yeah, the that's the, you're, 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 you're juggling it. You know what I mean? Because when Joe's out and i got to move one guy over, 
and in the competition, but that doesn't mean they're still not competing. Because, hey, you're more physical than he is, or he's more physical than you are that day, guys. Hey, you're going to be just as physical as he is. I don't care if you're playing on the left. Okay, you're going to be just as physical as, you know, so that all plays a part in it. You know, mental assignment breakdowns. You know, who's the smarter guy? Who's the... Go ahead. You have a question? Yesterday was a big day for all of the offensive line units. How did you grade that day out, particularly in the live tackling? Here's what I know about training camps after 30-plus years at this level, okay? It, you don't get too high with the highs, and you don't get too low with the lows. You get excited. And you, you know, now they got to come out and do it again today, and they got to come out and do it again tomorrow. You know, and the next day, and then you start to get that little, you know what I mean? But one day is one day. But that was a high. Wait. Yeah, I, I, you feel good, but you don't get really high. It's not a high like we went to the Super Bowl. And you get a good feeling about yourself. But it's just, it's just a day. It's a day in the day of camp, okay? And, to, you know, those defensive guys, you know, they're being, they're being fed red meat now. You know what I mean? So they're going to come back out here. They think, they just, you know, they're not going to play slap and tickle this afternoon. That ain't going to happen. You know, they're going to come out and try to beat beat us down pretty good. And we need to be rich. We have to rise up to the occasion. This is the third year for for Cam Irving, and he's he's certainly had his ups and downs early in his career. What have you seen from him since you've come in and and, and where he's at? He he gained weight. He got stronger, okay, and he's put more time in the books, which is good and in the film. You know what I mean? So he's taking the small steps, and I told him, look, what happens before? You got to learn how to flush that. You can't never, you can't change the past. The only thing you can control is what's happening right now, Cam. So you got to stop from here and go forward. What's an example? You talk about Coleman and Irving competing in the classroom. So give us an example of what, what that competition is. They, the, the questions that are asked, I'll say, I'll go out there and I'll say, okay, Cam, on this duel, what are you looking at? You know what I mean? And he'll tell me, and I'll say, okay, uh, Sean, okay, explain to me, right, this protection, okay, and what it should look like. And he could explain it to me. And one's going to try to outdo the other to see how much they know about that spot, about that question. That's competing with one another. Bob, were you around the Bengals when Munoz was still playing? Yes. Joe Thomas. I can't. Ask you. Right now, right, I, I told Joe the other day, I said, look, right, when I had Anthony in camp, you guys seen Anthony? Oh, you've got, you guys could come out here then? I can't remember. I don't know. But we, I brought Anthony to the camp. Minicamp. Yeah, when we were at OTAs and stuff, I had Anthony, Owen Coots, and Scotty Peters up here. Okay? And I told Joe, I said, Joe, if I had to pick, it's him. Because you don't have a yellow jacket yet. He does. <laughs> but, but Anthony, I, Anthony was a, a really good football player. You know what I mean? Now, he didn't do what Joe did, has done right now. Joe's played every snap in the National Football League. Anthony had, didn't do that, but he played, and he was what, 10 year old pro, 11 year old pro? You know, so. Is that yeah. the greatest lineman you've coached? So far, yeah, I've had a lot of good ones. Owen Cooch is a really good one. You know, Paul Gruber. You know, I got Joe, uh, Anthony. Anthony was your true professional. He came in and, and the first day he'd take notes, right? When we started as a, as a first year player, and then 13 years later, he come to meetings and still take notes. Okay, that's what the good ones do.